Welcome to the February 2022 Star Wars Canon Update. Last month, we got the last two episodes of The Book of Boba Fett, a new book, a manga, and seven comic issues, so let's dive in. The Book of Boba Fett aired its final two episodes in February. Chapter 6 was a really great Star Wars story with Luke teaching Grogu and Din learning to let go of feelings of control he has for Grogu, and we got the return of Cobb Vanth, as well as the live-action debut of Cad Bane. It was all awesome. Like I said, great Star Wars story, but not a very good Boba Fett story. But the season or series finale or whatever it is brought the focus back to Boba, and I enjoyed the conclusion. It all wrapped up basically how I thought it would, with Fett defending Mos Espa from the Pike Syndicate. And also, he wrote a Rancor. That was sick. I'm not going to spend too much time with the series, because like I've said in previous Canon Update videos, if you're watching this channel, it's almost a guarantee that you watched The Book of Boba Fett. If you want to hear my full thoughts on the series, I'll link to my review in the cards. Midnight Horizon was the new High Republic young adult novel that came out right at the start of the month, and I loved it. It reminded me a lot of reading The Rising Storm. The first half is more of a slow burn, but once the poodoo hits the fan, it just grabs you and does not let go. It's largely about a Nile attack on Corellia, which feels like it could have been an out-of-the-way, self-contained story, but finishing it got me so amped, not just because of what happened, but because of hints dropped about Phase 2. You can check out my full review in the cards, and if you're interested in picking up Midnight Horizon for yourself, you can get the audiobook for free on Audible by clicking on the link in the description or by visiting www.audibletrial.com slash Star Wars Explained. The High Republic issue 14 saw the end of the Jedi's assault on the Nile's Great Hall. Keeve pulled Avar back from the brink of killing Lorna D, and several of the Nile were detained. But of course, on their return to Starlight Beacon, the events of the Fallen Star begin and the station starts to crash. The Jedi enter to begin evacuating survivors, but are hit by the effects of the Leveler. And of course, Lorna escapes her cell because things aren't bad enough. I love that despite knowing some of the outcome of this story, there were still added wrinkles and threats for our heroes to overcome. I'm clamoring to see how this series ends. The final issue of Trail of Shadows was insane. This has easily been one of the best comic miniseries Star Wars has put out since Marvel took over again in 2015. Imric and Cyan are two characters that came into the story relatively late, and they were pretty much only in this series, but they just kicked the doors into my heart. They're so great individually and together. But the big draw of this issue was a conclusion to their investigation into the creature that killed Loden Greatstorm. The Nameless, or the Shriekeray, or the Eaters of the Force. I was hoping we'd get some answers, and we absolutely did. Not the full picture, but enough for me to be satisfied for now. And the reveals were chilling. I love the idea of Emric being unable to see the Nameless for what it truly is, because he's a Jedi, so he just has to stand there in a terrifying hallucination while Cyan describes what she sees. My heart was just pounding that entire issue, and I haven't even mentioned the fact that it basically leaves us with some cliffhangers on characters from the High Republic Adventures series, and we've had to wait for weeks to see the final issue of that. I could probably talk about this issue forever, but I already covered it more fully, so I'll just link to that in the cards and we can move on. And right into the High Republic Adventures issue 13 to address those cliffhangers, but they're still cliffhangers, and that is killing me. There are some potential character deaths that we still don't have more information on, and while I'm dying a little inside waiting, it's okay. Because the High Republic Adventures is not doom and gloom. It ends on a happier note. It ends on the culmination of Lula, Court, and Farzala's emotional journeys. Lula expresses her love for Zine and confronts what that means for her future as a Jedi. She decides she's not ready to be knighted at this moment, but the door is still open. Meanwhile, her two friends are knighted while she happily looks on, and Starlight Beacon looms in the distance. This series was probably the biggest surprise in the High Republic to me. It was just as moving and exciting as the other stories, and it's absolutely worth reading if you've been into the adult titles and are on the fence about reading an all-ages comic. But I do hope those cliffhangers are addressed somehow in the final issue of Marvel's High Republic comic in the next couple days. The second volume of the Edge of Balance manga is our final High Republic story of the month. Like the first volume, I enjoyed it well enough. It kinda reminds me of the Star Wars Adventures comics. A little more simple in its themes, but a fun time. And it's also dark, along with pretty much every other story here at the end of Phase 1. Kinda like when Star Wars Visions came out, I said I'm not well versed in anime. That's probably even more true with manga. It's not really my style, but I did enjoy the art, and Lily has some especially cool moments. Her lightsabers are a 
great design. I also think this volume felt a little more connected to the rest of the High Republic story than the first, with the final pages feeling especially important and ominous. The second issue of Crimson Rain was cool. I like how this series is really digging into not only Kira, but also every character she's recruited. We're seeing all the ways the Empire has wronged these people and how quickly they can be recruited to work for someone like Kira, who is also manipulating them. She is not completely unlike Palpatine, the man she's working to defeat. Deathstick captures Cadelia, who has been a focus of the Bounty Hunters comic since it began, and Ochi assassinates a bunch of Palpatine's royal guards, which was the highlight of the story for me. So I guess Ochi isn't working as a double agent? He seems like he really is on Kira's side, or maybe this is all for show. I'm definitely still unsure of his true allegiances right now, and I like that. Darth Vader issue 20 gives us even more Ochi, but it also gives us Sabe and her motivations for joining Crimson Dawn. She's basically just using them to hunt Vader for the time being, and I am alright with that. I didn't think her joining a criminal syndicate fit her character, but using a criminal syndicate to seek revenge for Padme makes sense. She learns that Luke is Padme and Anakin's son, but she hasn't yet learned of Vader's true identity. She hopes to learn more by planting a false list of Crimson Dawn collaborators within the Empire, and in all the chaos, she corners Ochi and Sly Moore to leverage them into working for her because they are collaborators. I loved the start of this series when Sabe was involved, and I already like seeing her back. She is breathing new life into a story that I felt was meandering a bit in the past year. Star Wars Adventures issue 14 was pretty standard Star Wars Adventures fare. The first story was a conclusion of a cliffhanger that involved Rey and a scoundrel escaping from a bounty hunter. But the second story was the standout of the two. Written by Justina Ireland, it was about Diva Lompop, a member of the Nile, helping a little girl stand up to some bullies in the most terrifying way, showing that she has a bit of a heart. And as the girl comments on how nice Diva was, we see her and the other Nile just ransacking the planet in the background. I don't know, I just thought that one was cute and fun and funny in all the right ways. The Halcyon Legacy comics started this month, and the first issue was alright. Not bad, but definitely just feels like it exists as an advertisement for the Star Cruiser at Disney World. But it did have some fun connections to the High Republic and Midnight Horizon, especially with Shug Drabor, the Anzellan designer of the ship. Like I said, it wasn't bad, but it's far from a must-read comic. For story of the month, I am going with Trail of Shadows, issue 5. The Book of Boba Fett, chapter 6, was also excellent, but you probably already watched that, and let's be honest, as good of a Star Wars story as it was, it caused a lot of discussion about whether or not it belonged in Boba Fett's series. Trail of Shadows was perfect all around from its first to its fifth and final issue, and if I can convince just one person to check it out, I will be happy with myself. Person to check it out, I will short story in Star Wars Insider and 10 new comic issues. That includes includes the start of the new Han Solo and Chewbacca series, but also the final two comic issues of the first phase of The High Republic, which I'm very excited to see. And then it's business as usual with all of our other ongoing series. Things are going to slow down for the next few months, but we'll be back into the madness in May with the premiere of Obi-Wan Kenobi and all that it'll bring. But that's it for February. The canon update will return on April 1st to cover all those new stories. Until then, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram, and consider checking out our Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.